Hello and welcome. I'm Machine Dana from Stream Centrals. I hope you guys are doing really, really well. Hope you're having a great day. So in this video, I'm going to be going through how to keep your stream entertained when you've got zero or at least very few viewers in your chat. Now, when you first start streaming on Twitch or YouTube gaming or Facebook or whatever, there's a good chance you may have zero viewers in your chat or at least very few viewers in your chat because you will not have established yourself as a streamer yet. You may not have had time to build up a community yet, or you may have just got a little bit unlucky and not had the same discoverability that you may get in in due course. So the main purpose of this video is to run through some really useful and proactive tips on how you can keep your chat really entertaining when there are zero viewers in the chat and how to help build up your community over the longevity of time. Now the thing about streaming is discoverability can be very difficult, it is very competitive and you need to see streaming as a very long-term thing. Almost all of the biggest streamers have been doing this for five to ten years, a really long time. This isn't something that happens overnight but with lots of little improvements you can really improve improve the quality of your community, the quality of your own content, and build up some loyal viewers. In the video, I'm going to be talking about a range of different things. Some of them are like really practical things that you can simply just do on your stream. And some of them are more about the mentality of streaming and more of the softer skills that you should have or try and work on as you develop as a streamer over time. So make sure you tune in for the whole video. You will find all of these tips really, really useful. We've got loads of different tips on the Stream Essentials website. So please feel free to browse some of the articles on the website. Make sure you check out my YouTube channel on the link above and of course like and subscribe to this video because it really really helps and you're gonna want to see more of our content let's go So the format of this video is basically just going to be more of a chatty type of video where I'm going to be talking about different tips. I've not formally got a specific number of tips I'm going to give. I'm just going to be talking about general themes here. First thing I'm going to really mention here is whether it's Twitch or YouTube gaming or whatever the platform, and this is the first tip here, you don't ever need to be streaming to zero viewers. You should always have at least one or two viewers in your chat, and that is because you can have a second account, your wife can have a second account, your mum, you can at least have one or two accounts that can be lurking your own account. Loads of people do this on Twitch and YouTube. It's not against terms and conditions, particularly if it's your wife's account or your, your mum's account or something like that. But also there is a practical reason why you might want to lurk your own on a second account. If you want to check on the fly the quality of your own stream, you will want to be able to see it from the viewer's point of view and not just OBS Studio. I used to do this a hell of a lot in my own in the early days, especially because I wanted to make sure that there was always a really high quality on the actual stream itself. For example, the audio and of course the visual too. By having at least one or two viewers viewers in your chat that are lurked accounts of yours or your mum's or your wife's or something like that, that will guarantee that you're above anyone that is zero or in the case that you've got two, it will guarantee that you're above the one people, which means straight away you're more likely to get exposed to more people because you'll be higher up in the list. Next I'm going to talk about mentality and mentality is really really important when you're thinking about this. To keep your stream at a consistent level of entertainment or at least the bar being a relatively high level of entertainment in your stream, even when there's a low number of viewers or even zero viewers in your chat. You need to think about how you come across both when there are more people in your chat and when there are very few people in. You can't just be entertaining when you've got loads of people in chat and then sort of die off a little bit when there's nobody in your chat. You've got to be mindful that there may still be people that are lurking around even when the chat is really quiet or that at any time somebody new could come if you've got no viewers in your chat. It's no good just getting completely hyped up whenever there's more people in your chat and being really boring and quiet when there's not many people or any people in your chat. That's just not going to help you. So it's really, really important that you disassociate the way you behave to your view account. You can't just behave a certain way depending on your view account. Now, don't get me wrong here, by the way, there may be times in the week where you have a certain vibe in your stream versus other times in the week. For example, my Sunday streams are always super chilled out. We play Civilization and it's always nice and chill in the chat. I have fairly quiet music on and people know that it's a chilled stream on a Sunday. Conversely, if I stream on a Friday or a Saturday, today, it's normally a lot more hyped up, might be having a couple of beers or something like that. So that's actually based on the time of week. I always keep a relatively base level of interaction with chat, regardless of whether there's one viewer there or 50 viewers there. And that's something that you really need to bear in mind when you're doing this. You can't just completely change on a coin flip, depending on how many viewers there are. A really simple way of effectively dealing with this in terms of the mentality is to simply hide the view account in Twitch. Now, the way you hide your view account in Twitch is simply by 
crossing out and clicking this icon here just like that and it will put a dash there so no matter how many viewers whether it's zero one or 50 you will not see that amount and therefore you should be hopefully a little bit more mentally detached from whatever that number is think about it logically if you're always streaming as though there are a thousand people in your chat clearly your entertainment value and your growth and your hype and your success or rather your chances of success are going to be way higher than if your mood is being affected with how that number fluctuates and also bear in mind that that number will always naturally fluctuate there will be peak times and there'll be quieter times that's something that would happen naturally and it's not always dependent on how you're acting although clearly how you act and how entertaining your streams are have a huge influence on what that number is next i'm going to talk a little bit about music and ambience now you may or may not like to have music playing in your stream there are loads of dmca copyright free music out there that you can use on your stream so make sure you subscribe to the channel because we're going to be releasing a video soon about different dmca playlists that we would recommend to you but there are different tools that you can actually use to make sure that the music is not even turned on for you so even if you don't like hearing the music through your own headset your viewers will probably like some of the ambience of the music and you can have it so that your viewers can hear it but you cannot me for example i use a connection between my go xlr and my stream deck which is an integration which changes the routing within my go xlr which means i cannot hear the music but the viewers can hear it but i've also got a button that swaps and changes that so whenever i need to i can still hear the music or whenever i feel like it the reason why playing music is really really important on your stream even if it's a really low level in the background is your music can help dictate the tone of what your stream is what is the vibe is it a chilled stream is it a hyped stream are you doing a challenge do you need some intensity in the stream it can really set the tone of the content that you're trying to provide conversely if you don't have music you're then put in a position where it's almost really only your content out of your mouth or of course just the gameplay itself and given that especially in saturated categories the games are kind of monotonous the gameplay alone will not get you viewership and growth and also particularly if you stream for a long time you may not want to be covering and chatting the whole time into the microphone you may want breaks in the content and that's where the music can just provide a little bit of input a little bit of a break for you as the streamer and it means that you're not reliant on the gameplay alone i always play music on virtually every single one of my streams i have done since the start and my viewers absolutely love it and i also get the viewers to interact with the music as well by telling me what playlists i should be playing and things like that even if you don't play music the whole time on your stream consider having at least segments where you do have music for example if at the start of your stream you spend 20 minutes chatting to your stream that'd be a really good time to have some like nice chilled ambient music having music in the background of your stream puts you above an amount of other streamers that simply won't have that so if you start the baseline with zero viewers but you've got music on in the background you're more likely to retain a viewer for longer because straight away your stream's a little bit more interesting than somebody that isn't playing music so the next section i want to be really really frank about how little or how much you actually do talk when you've got zero or very few people in your chat the traditional advice here and i've seen lots of videos like this would be you just need to be talking all the time and i actually disagree somewhat with that mentality whilst i think it's really important that you are doing some game commentary and you have reactions and you bring some emotion and some entertainment and jokes and stuff to the table when it is a little bit quieter it's okay to have certain periods where you are a little bit less chatty the thing about being a streamer and the difference between that form of media versus let's say tv or youtube with streaming it's a two-way piece of media the communication is two-way and what i mean by that is that a viewer can literally influence what's going on in your stream ask questions and interact with the presenter that is you the streamer whereas tv movies things like that you absorb the content in a one-way situation you can't affect what's on screen and you can't interact with what's on screen and the point i'm trying to make here about not filling the time all the time just by chatting 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 is you want to save your voice and a little bit of your energy for the situations when the chat is a little bit more burly or maybe even the situations where the gameplay warrants some further chat you don't want to be coming away from every stream with a sore throat and feeling like you've not got the energy to do anything else because you've put all your effort into talking to nobody for 90 percent of the time because when you first start off streaming you probably will have zero viewers for a long period of time so it's actually okay to just have some quiet moments in your stream you don't need to blindly talk to absolutely nobody just because some people on the internet say that that's what you need to do it's completely okay for there to be quieter moments in your chat and that's definitely a situation where having some ambient music will help one thing you do really really need to be mindful of though even if you've got a quiet chat or even zero viewers most of the time 
time, you have to be checking chat all the time. I can't count the amount of times where I've gone into really quiet streams and the person isn't used to having too many people in their chat. Perhaps they're a new streamer or something like that. And they've ignored the very few people that are chatting. That's the most infuriating and frustrating thing that I see. And I'm talking here from a viewer's viewpoint. If someone's got no real excuses for ignoring chat, for example, if the gameplay isn't too intense, and, and certainly if they don't have like a really full chat, there's no excuse for not responding to people in a timely way. You should have your chat up at all times. You should be monitoring that every... 20 to 30 seconds for any new chats that are coming through and any new chats that do come through you obviously need to be making the most of those opportunities to try and interact with those people to convert them into longer term viewers now next just briefly going to cover a little bit about the actual category that you choose to stream in now obviously if you're fairly new to streaming or perhaps you're struggling to get new viewers one of the issues that you may be having is that you're streaming in the wrong category you're streaming in a category that isn't going to yield you any discoverability and there is a little bit of a science to this this. Some categories are far better at gaining new viewers than others. And that's what I'm going to talk about right now. If I just move my camera out the way here. On Twitch, you've got recommended for you, but you've also got sorting viewers from high to low. And this is in the directory, so forward slash directory. Now, these are the ones that Twitch is recommending to me, which is funny. I could maybe try some of these out. I'm curious to see why Twitch are recommending these particular categories to me. But if I wanted to just go to viewing from high to low, the thing is, if you go into categories with six figures of viewers, for example, Minecraft, Grand Theft Auto 5, Fortnite, Apex Legends at the moment, these categories are notoriously bad for picking up viewers new viewers and the reason for that is you're not naturally going to be getting picked up from people that are scrolling through particularly if you've got zero or very few viewers in your chat bearing in mind what i said earlier that you should always have at least one or two viewers in your chat because you can lurk on your own channel but when you start to get a little bit further down this list and i'm talking from the 1000 through to 10 to 20,000 viewers so anything from sort of here downwards these are all categories that have enough viewers in them that there's going to be spillage into new channels and people doing a little bit of browsing but there's not so many people in the categories that you're going to be really really far down the scroll list so maybe try scrolling through some of these lower down categories not the ones all the way at the bottom but some that are in that middle section i think the sweet spot is a thousand to five thousand viewers in total you're more likely to pick up new viewers in those categories because there's enough viewers in there that will be browsing around i always use marbles on stream as a really really good example of this at the moment there's 2.6 thousand viewers here there's a lot of people that follow this channel nearly half a million but if i scroll down it looks like there's only about 30 or 35 viewers here so here anyone that's just wanting to join a random stream or join some random marbles on stream games they're going to be able to scroll through and you've got more of a chance of being clicked here because people don't have to scroll too far to even see your channel and that's called an impression if someone sees your channel that's an impression now you're never going to get 100 percent of the clicks from the impression you've got more of a chance in a category like marbles on stream than say fortnite because the number of impressions that you're likely to get will be a lot higher this also brings me to another point about game categories any game categories that are inherently involving the viewer is also going to be a higher yielding new viewer category so if you've got very few viewers you could try once or twice per week going into a category like marbles on stream where it inherently involves the viewer getting involved in the stream and joining the race that's a way of being able to find new viewers and get more discovered than you may otherwise be and the good thing about a category like marbles on stream is it's fairly agnostic agnostic to the game that you're playing people aren't inherently only going to be watching marbles on stream they will be interested in lots of other games they may just be in marbles on stream to get some of that community feel jackbox party parks is a really good example of this as well sometimes people just want the interaction of playing the games with the streamer among us is another really really good example of this too if i scroll down we can see here we've only got around about 30 or 40 streamers that are playing this at the moment but there are 2,000 people that are viewing and this is a game that other people would easily be able to join in on another really cool way of keeping your streams a little bit more entertaining when there's zero people in chat and this is definitely something that helped me when i first started streaming is if you just always game with some of your friends assuming you've got some really good friends that will be available to game with if not try and make some new friends that you can game with and the way you do that is to go into different categories and talk to like-minded people you may be able to find other streamers that you can game with you may have some other natural friends from school or from your work life 
or something like that that you're able to game with. And what that will do is it will bring some natural interaction to your stream, even when you're not actually talking to viewers. And that has like a psychological effect that when somebody new joins your chat, even if it's a really quiet chat, you're still there giving your human element. The difference is you're actually talking to somebody else that will be on Discord or TeamSpeak or something like that. That then means that someone's going to be more likely to stick around as a viewer because they're having some of that human interaction. Now, if there's anybody here watching this that's saying, well, I don't really have any good friends that I can chat with or my friends don't like the same games that I have. In that situation, we've got you, okay? There are literally apps out there that you can go on and find like-minded people to game with for certain game categories. Now, there's one here called Plix, and this one's been advertised a lot lately on TikTok, but there's a load of different ones you can try out. One thing just to be careful, though, of if you are gaming with your friends, you have to bear in mind that you are live and there will be people that will join your chat from time to time. You don't want to be giving those viewers the feeling that you're ignoring them or that there's like an inner circle. You really want to be trying to involve them in the chat that you're having with your friends. I have on occasion joined other people's streams where there's been some people in chat or even very few people in chat and it's felt a little bit like almost like the people on the Discord chat have been quite negative about the stream and in those situations that can actually be a really bad thing to have on your stream. So I would definitely advise thinking very carefully about who you game with. If you find that they're quite negative about your stream, that is 100% going to put some people off if they're new viewers to your stream and you as the streamer. And that's just an unfortunate byproduct of gaming with some of your friends. But hopefully you're able to either have a chat with some of your friends or just be a little bit mindful of that. Next, I'm just going to talk about the actual style of stream that you have. Now, if you're playing a game that you know a lot of information about, perhaps you've put hundreds or even thousands of hours into a particular game, that is definitely a situation where you're going to be able to have like a tutorial style or some of your content can be tutorial style. Me, for example, I've got a lot of time in Civilization 6 and Civilization 5, so I'm able to advise new people that come to my stream any questions they've got about Civilization 6. In those situations, sometimes I will put AMA in the tags on those streams, so ask me anything. There's also a tutorial tag that you can use on Twitch as well. That in itself is one of the ways to get more discovered because sometimes people will specifically look for people that have got experience in a particular game category. Perhaps they've just recently bought the game and they want to get to know someone in the community so that they can learn more about that particular game. But even if you don't have hundreds or thousands of hours in a particular game, maybe you're new to the game, putting tags like the first playthrough will mean that your stream is a little bit more engaging, a little bit more different, and it gives it a different edge to it. You're experiencing all the things that perhaps a viewer may have already experienced in that game, and therefore they will take some entertainment and some enjoyment from seeing your reactions to perhaps silly, stupid, or entertaining things that happen. Obviously, things like horror games are particularly good for this, but anything that's a story-based game as well is something that's really good for that type of shock, new playthrough type of game. When you have very low viewership or even zero viewership, it's really important that when you do get a viewer in your chat, it's really important that you welcome them straight away to the stream, that you acknowledge their chat as quickly as possible, and that you try and engage with them as high a level as possible. How do you do that? Well, asking open-ended questions to the viewer is going to try and keep them engaged. Having a friendly, smiley vibe about you will obviously help that along. Keeping an eye on current affairs and things that are going on in your world and then engaging with any new viewers in chat about that will also help you as well. So asking questions to the viewer about their opinions on maybe something that's happened in the streaming world or in the gaming world or anything like that that you might be interested in is a way of being able to engage with those viewers to a high level to involve them more and you stand a better chance of A, retaining them as a longer term viewer, but B, at least giving them a great experience for your stream. So don't be shy when someone's in your chat. Don't give one word answers and concentrate on the, the game. If you want to just game and you're more interested in the game than streaming, then perhaps you shouldn't be streaming that particular game or even at all. So hopefully you guys found that useful and picked up loads of inspiration and tips on how you can really improve the interactivity on your channel when there's very few or even zero viewers in your chat. And at very least, hopefully it gave you some confidence to move forwards in a more productive, proactive manner. Have a great day. Take care.